Greetings, dear friends! I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the BMW F01. The suspension of the F01 is very solid. Big aluminium levers, large ball joints and silent blocks, powerful front steering knuckle. In practice, the resource is highly dependent on driving style and rubber. With careful handling, the suspension is almost eternal, but the high loads from the dive drivetrain racing and impacts from the low-profile run-flat tires can finish it off very quickly. Many owners manage to change the original components every 30,000 km, but most likely these kilometers are combat ones. And there one goes for two, well, or three. In any case, the front lower levers on official cars go for 100,000. But from private traders they often surrender to 50 because of the backlash of the ball and the attachment of the silent blocks. In the rear suspension, the upper links also serve very differently, often nursing more than 100 for calm drivers and a little more than 30 to 50 for racers. The lower support arm is more difficult to finish off, and its resource is more stable. The main failing element of this lever is just the ball one, which is supplied separately. The company does not change the cost of maximizing the cost of service. Huge and very expensive levers do not have a single replaceable silencer. Only the ball joint of the support arm at the rear is replaceable. As a result, if we put strictly original, the price of suspension repair only for its mechanical part will turn out to be high, something like 700 euros for the front suspension and more than a thousand for the rear. But do not rush to panic, there are non-original levers and replaceable silent blocks and proposals for restoring ball joints in the original levers. The latter, most likely, is very short and is still rare mainly on cars from the Caucasus and the Kuban. Prices will be high not only for parts, but also for work. When working with the F01, the service must be prepared for such things as saw in the aluminum fasteners, especially on the front steering knuckle, or the fastening points of aluminum subframes shedding due to corrosion. Almost all cars in this series have a hydraulic booster, and only the Boss Basic restyled 730i and hybrids are content with a direct drive ZF electric booster. But many cars have a dynamic drive DD, kit in addition, which adds a lot of wear parts. Electric rails are reliable, however, in case of not very strong accidents, they break the attachments to the subframe and damage the shaft. Plus, they often corrode the fasteners and tear and the drive belts when the mechanism wedges. Electronic failures of the EUR are successfully treated by flashing. Rare breakdowns of the torque sensor and electronics happen, but they don't make the weather. Fortunately, there are many such rails and they are not expensive. If the guy is with an electric rail and without DD, then there are no more problems. But these machines are in the minority. Surprisingly, with all the sharpening of BMW cars for the active driving, the transmission clearly has a very small margin of safety for any of the engines. Even with the base N52 and the weakest variant, the N57, the elastic coupled rear flank resource leaves much to be desired. When overloaded, the splines are cut off regularly, or it breaks the shank of the gearbox, which is more expensive. The elastic coupling with a rigid insert on the 750i or 760i versions is also short-lived. With more powerful motors, this problem persists and the risk of failure of the drives, the rear gearbox and the transfer case is added. It is enough to catch a hole, a joint, a manhole cover or a slippery section of the road at the moment of acceleration. Before restyling, the cars got many late versions of the ZF6 HP transmission. The rarest option is 6HP21. It was installed with N52 engines and with diesel engines and engines up to 4 to 4 liters, it was already 6HP28A. In general, a series of 6-speed automatic transmissions is considered not the most successful the 
for ZF, but over the past five years, the cost of repairs has been rapidly falling, as has the price of used units. Problems such as leaks of the Tromehatronics gasket, glasses and the filter pan, vibrations of shafts and wear of bushings, breakdown of sensors in mechatronics, distributions in its wiring and a relatively low resource of the torque converter GT, due to the selected algorithms of the blocking mechanism and high operating temperatures remain relevant, but all specialized services know about them. There will be no problems with the bulkhead there would be money. There are almost no cheap repairs in a specialized service and the average price does not fall below 100,000, tending to 150 or more. The oil, of course, gets clogged with wear products very quickly, so replacement is indicated often, every 30 to 40,000. The less often the replacement, the more expensive the repair will be in the end. In many ways, they all apply to BMW. Although the resource on German cars is slightly higher than that of Jaguars due to the better cooling system of the automatic transmission, but potentially after 200,000 millage even with neat drivers, the box requires repairs. The potential resource until the moment when it is necessary to change shafts, planetary gears and baskets is approaching 500,000 km. Diagnostics of automatic transmissions of these series is quite convenient. The mechatronic technician knows everything about the state of the hydraulics, it is enough to look at the adaptations and you can form the correct opinion about the condition. Before restyling, 8-speed automatic transmissions of the 8HP70 or 8HP90 series were installed only on the 760A version, and after that all versions received it. This is a development of the design of the 6-speed gearbox in terms of hydraulics, but the mechanical part and the gas turbine engine have been significantly changed. At the same time, we removed the problematic glasses and approved many small structural elements. Changing the algorithms for the operation of the gas turbine engine and the introduction of a more efficient damper of torsional vibrations made it possible to remove the blocking slip modes in non-power modes of operation which greatly reduced oil contamination compared to 6 mortar. The increase in the number of steps in the automatic transmission also reduced the number of operating modes with an unlocked gas tubing engine. Unfortunately, the lightning of the mechanical part brought its own nuisance to the operation. So, driving with the slightest jolts leads to serious damage to the planetary gears, which greatly increases the cost of repairs. And the box, in contrast to the 6-speed, does not really like drifters, sleeping and other modes with jerks. If there is no trolley bus hull, then with a high probability the box will be in order with runs up to 150 to 200,000. Four-wheel drive, traditional for BMW, with a transfer case from Magna ATC35L or ATC45L series. These are the transfer case versions without forced lubrication and uh, therefore particularly sensitive to oil level, travel speed and load. Failure of bearings and wear of the clutch go much faster here than in boxes with E65, but it is more difficult to name specific runs. Sometimes the boxes reach 120 to 150,000 millage without errors, but their actual efficiency by this moment is already near zero since the clutches are worn out as much as possible and the moment forward is particularly not transmissed. If you drive hard, the problems will begin by 50,000. Breakdown of the electric motor and the drive worm, which provides the primary compression of the clutch pack, remains a traditional problem. The second popular most problem is the wear of the clutches and the cutting of the box splines. Fortunately, by the standards of the F01, handouts cost just a penny. You can exchange them for a reverse with the return of a broken part, literally for 250 euros. True, usually in addition to the transfer case, the replacement of the front universal joint is required. It has a traditional problem with the splines and often the front drives. When the transfer case is wedged, they die immediately. If there are jerks and jerks on picking up speed, then you can either turn off the four-wheel drive programmatically, for example through the xdelete software, or pull out the transfer case fuse and see if the jerks disappear. 
Operation of a car with a fault transfer case can result in a series of repairs at a price many times higher than the cost of the box itself. Simple engines on BMW have long been gone, and yet the presence in the engine line of engines such as N52B30, N54B30, N55B30, and of course N57D30OL, and even N57D30TOP is definitely a big plus of the car. These engines are relatively simple and have a good service life. True, they are not cheap to operate in any case and are demanding on maintenance, it is advisable to change the oil more often than prescribed by the regulations, once every 7000 km, the H once every 10,000, and it is advisable to install cold thermostats, blends, firmware to reduce the operating temperature. Along with engines simple by BMW standards, there are also extremely complex N63 or N74 and the triple supercharged diesel N57D30S1, which works literally on the brink. With these engines, it is already difficult to expect high reliability. Here, too, it is necessary to lower the temperature, because most of the problems in operation are associated with the high aging rate of rubber and plastic elements, which directly depends on the temperature of the engines and the temperature in the engine compartment. Probably the most extreme option in this regard is the N63 series G8, with its turbines in the collapse of the block and catalyst immediately behind them. The simplest motor and the only one without direct injection is the N52B30A or N52B30AF with a capacity of 255 out of 258 HP. It stands on the initial 730i. Don't be surprised that the cars with it are rare and expensive, but reliability is close to maximum if the owner is not chasing sports dynamics. The N52 motor with its magnesium block is very afraid of overheating. The cylinder head and the block itself drives easily. It is quite complex for an atmospheric engine. It has a Valvetronic throttle-free intake, double VANOS phase shifters, two stage adjustment of the geometry of the DISA intake manifold with an electric drive, a cooling system with an electric pump, a vacuum pump, and there is a lot of plastic in the engine design. The main suppliers of problems are just VANOS, DISA and Velvetronic. The pump here is electric and by no means eternal. The motor wears out, at first it can underestimate the speed and not provide the required pressure, then it even gets up, which provides a whole bunch of cooling problems, and this, as mentioned above, is a weak point of engine mechanics. The price of the part does not dispose to regular replacement, but unfortunately it is necessary. The oil must be changed more often. Do not forget about the gaskets of the oil cooler and the oil glass, at least not to miss the drips, but as a maximum to change them frequently thousands after 30 to 50 in cold regions and after 50 to 70 in warmer regions. In any case, due to the high temperature, almost all gaskets and oil seats require replacement after 100 to 150,000 millage, and it is better not to tighten with this. You cock the piston or miss the oil level. The level sensor, by the way, is electronic and not very reliable. The motor is finely tuned, and the failure of any timing component and power supply, as well as sensor failures, leading to a decrease in power and an increase in appetite. Increased wear of the mechanical part is usually associated with operation in emergency condition, but, like most atmospheric engines, the car remains on the move. Potentially, the motor can go 300,000 km if you do not save on maintenance, that is, to carry out in-depth diagnostics at each MLT, if necessary, change the sensors and not save on consumables. The motors of the EN54B30 line are at 740i before restyling and N55B30 at 740i after restyling are also in line 6, but already with supercharging and direct injection. The N54 motor does not have a Velstronic and has a conventional throttle, while the N55 has a more complex cylinder head and a throttle-free intake, but this is not a disadvantage or an advantage for any of them. This has little effect on reliability, but consumption from this does not increase in a real driving cycle, 
On the other hand, the nozzles on the N54 are basal electronic, while those on the N55 are electromagnetic. And the last one is a really big advantage. BMW's experiments with piezoelectronic injectors for gasoline engines can be called epic fail of a cosmic scale. Piezo ceramics turned out to be capricious and in combination with temperature sensitivity, the resource tends to zero. But BMW did not dare to immediately change them to electromagnetic ones, it took the replacement of the motor series. The malfunctions of the piezo injectors on the N54 are quite varied. The most unpleasant thing is that after power failures they can start pouring. There are even unpleasant thing is that after uh, wet or hammers because of it. This. this is mainly expressed in uneven idle, mixture errors, power limitation and detonation. It is believed that the last 12th generation of the injectors is quite stable and BMW allows you to replace the injectors of the old revisions with fresh ones twice, but in practice there are limitations and not everyone goes to the service with an old car to check the VIN for reversible campaigns. The price of the injector is now about 120 euros, the cost of replacing all six is a pretty penny. Moreover, the injection pump is impermanent. With 100 and plus millage, you need to be ready to replace it, it costs about 450 euros. The N55 engine, as already mentioned, relies on ordinary electromagnetic injectors. They are cheaper, more compact and fail extremely rarely. Of course, with good fuel and a serviceable injection pump. There are two turbines on the N54 engine, one for every three cylinders. These are Mitsubishi MHI TD-03 to 005 or TD-03L4 and they are inexpensive, if you do not chase the boxes with the BMW lettering. Original cost 1200 euros, the same under the Mitsubishi brand 350. The j Ron cartridge is promised for a ridiculous 25 euros, Melet from 120. Unfortunately, variants 730i and 740i are less common than 750i, and the other motor is completely different in terms of maintenance, cost and resource. The turbocharged V8 of the N63 series is one of the two phases. Before restyling, it has a regular intake and on the N63 B4040U version it has a throttle-less Valvetronic and many other fixes. But the main thing is that this motor no longer has cast iron liners, cylinders 8, and it is made according to the hot V theme, with turbines in the collapse of the block. The design of the block migrated from the conventional, naturally aspirated V8 and 62. There is no cooling jacket on the central part of the block, and the heads do not have an upper jacket to neutralize the negative effects of such a decision. This means that the center and rear of the block and the cylinder head are seriously overheated. This leads to aging of gaskets, well stem, seals and even more motor sensors, as well as to cooking of the piston cooling nozzles. The block here is made of alluvial. The cylinders inflate well over time, even without scoring the gap grows so much that the oil literally burns out before our eyes. An overheating from the turbines literally rips out the threads from the cylinder block. Direct injection nozzles here are the same as on the N54, piezoelectronic. And the problems with them are the same, only there are already 8 of them and the price of replacing them with new ones will be much more than 1000 euros. The timing belt of two change is very frail. The conditioner must be monitored in bath. The resource may be less than a hundred thousand. Any extra noise, noise is a reason to open the front cover. The change themselves are resourceful, but they are cut off by the appearance of slack, breakdowns of the tensioners and wear of the dampers. The pump is simple mechanical, electrical only auxiliary and in the cooler system. Troubled? It is very troublesome, difficult and inexpensive.
Cost of overalling only a block with a liner and a new piston group comes out at least 500,000 rubles in 2021 prices. And the total cost of repairs with the repair of tubings, where the supply pipes with oil coke and pipes with antifreeze flow, and replacement of elements of the cooling system can exceed 600,000. Why is the 750i so much? The secret is simple. 400 to 450 forces already allow a heavy sedan to fly over the road. While the engine is alive, its fuel consumption is less than that of the atmospheric N52B30, literally within 13 to 15 liters in Moscow. And everything can be forgiven for the sensations when you press the gas. Let's add here just great forcing capabilities. The original cylinder block without reinforcement tolerates an increase in power up to 560 to 600 forces in versions after restyling. Aluzil is strong here. It does not always lift him up. There are cars without scoring with runs over 300. Especially if the oven lowered the operating temperature by installing a corrector or a cold thermostat. However, when buying, you need to count on a completely different option. A typical N63 from under the rider is a mass logger and again a mass logger. A liter is 2 per thousand. Well, if only because of the tightly caulked piston and dead valve bushings and completely decomposed valve seals. But more often one or two cylinders still pick up carbon deposits. And in cars, often and for a long time moving with gas to the floor, they already mentioned swelling of the liner's effects. The two beans are very overheated, and if the hood was not modernized and an air duct was not installed to cool them, then cracks in the hot pot, stirring the off wastegate axles and cars, with oil consumption and heavy wear of cartridges will, will be a typical nuisance. The two beans themselves are relatively inexpensive. Cartridges are around 120 euros, the original Garrett two bin is about 900. Knowing the cause of repairs, usually the motor is operated while it is starting. Often adding 2 liters of oil per thousand and blowing smoke plumes. Compared to the N63, the 6 liter V12 of the N74B60 series with 544 horsepower looks even more traditional. And such a unit can boast of an interesting pedigree. Its versions N74B66 and and N75B68 have been installed on Rolls-Royce cars since 2010. Tubings are outside, as expected, and the overall layout is better. A relatively low degree of forcing allows you to have a good resource, despite the fact that the motor is allusilic and very complex here. All of the above main disadvantages in the form of scoring, overheating, oil consumption and successful injectors are also present in this motor. But problems are less common. However, these motors themselves are not often found, so the sample for analysis is small. The only diesel engine on this series is the N57, a six-cylinder with a volume of 3 liters. The block is aluminium, the liners are cast iron, the timing is located on the flywheel cylinder side. The engines have a 24-valve cylinder head, common rail injection with piezo injectors and excellent performance. The basic version for the 730D and 57D30OL model has one turbine. The N57D30TOP version for the 740D machines has two turbines, and the N57D30S1 version for the 750D has three turbines. Power from 245 to 381 HP. However, mechanically, the motors are almost identical, and even the base 20, 245 horsepower variant gets 310 HP when cheap tuned. Without replacing the turbine, and to obtain 340 forces and 720 Nm, you need to put a larger intercooler and it is advisable to remove the swirl flaps in the intake manifold. They simply will not withstand. When replacing the base turbine GTB 2000 260V with a 2265 you can get 450 HP. With water injection, since the high EGT acts as the power limiter above 400 power. This is on the same turbine and for the weakest engine. 
In general, there are no problems with power and traction, and the consumption on the highway is 6 liters, and in the city about 10. Ridiculous figures for a 2-ton car with dynamics of 6 seconds to hundreds or less. The timing is immortal, but it covers its 150 to 200,000 kilometers. And no, you don't need to remove the motor or cylinder head for replacement. It is several times cheaper to remove the automatic transmission and put the gasket of the rear timing cover on a cylinder without breaking the cylinder head gasket. So there is less chance of messing up, faster and the cost of work is lower. Considering that the front end with the radiators is not understandable, this is not the worst technical solution. It is a pity that the service wants more work and more money, so motors and cylinders heads are often pulled out of place for routine maintenance. There is a budget repair option. To replace only the upper chain from the intermediate shaft to the camshaft. It is the weakest and wears out first. The middle chain can travel all 400,000 km, but the oil pump chain is not resourceful, so such a repair cannot be recommended. Be sure to clarify what exactly was changed when servicing the timing. Leaking valve cover, oil glass, antifreeze supply flange to the heat exchanger, breakdown of the heated VKH pipe, leaks of the oil exchange gaskets, rupture of the VKH membrane, breakage of the flaps in the intake manifold, all this happens quite often. The swerve flaps on the here do not die as quickly and epic as on the M57, but they are still better to remove. A small loss of power at low revs is easily compensated for by the firmware. And when tuning, they must be removed, because with the power of more than 300 forces, they very quickly become loose. The current valve cover and VKG system failures are typical for 200 plus runs and regular overheating. Well, it's true. By diesel standards, a temperature of 100 plus is already overheating. This often happens in cars with clogged radiators on the highway and speeds over 150. The particulate filter is reliable enough if the car drives outside the center of Moscow at least occasionally. The EGR system works well until the particulate filter is removed, with one unpleasant but. A leaking EGR heat exchanger can cause a fire in the engine compartment. In general, it was changed by a revocable company, and the replacement is still ongoing. But many owners do not go to dealers. Exhaust gas escaping from the heat exchanger can ignite nearby wiring and bodywork. Damping EGR in the case is not such a bad way out of the situation. True, there are still leaks of antifreeze and in order to avoid this problem, the heat exchanger must be completely removed. Even that, this significantly increases the engine warm-up time. Engines with two and three turbines have expensive supercharging units with an extremely complex exhaust configuration. Assembled such kits cost space money. Yes, the turbine cartridges in them are quite typical and can be replaced. But in case of cracking of the hot pots, you will have to look for a used one or buy a whole new one. The biggest troubles are associated with the wear of the crankshaft liners on the 730D and 740D. The 750D has a reinforced crankshaft, and problems are much less common. Interestingly, the connection of breakdowns with the tuning of the engine was not noted. The probability of problems does not depend on the moment. The manufacturer changed the liners to reinforced ones with a polymer layer already at the end of the production of the car. With them, the probability of scoring is greatly reduced, but it remains, especially in conditions of lack of pressure or overheating. On this, information about the problems of BMW F01 is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.